So the last time we, um, we met, we spoke about what I believe to be the primary reason why we should pray. And it is not because our goal for praying shouldn't be because of, you know, we want something. It shouldn't be because, um, you know, something is going wrong, so let me run to God. But our primary reason for prayer, for, for prayer should always be to establish a relationship with God. It should, I think, always be to, Lord, let me hear, I want to hear what is in your heart. And not so much, God, hear what is in mine, because he knows that already. I want to present to you a couple more important reasons why we should pray. One of them being because it might sound silly and funny, but it is very true. I mean, you think of it, and that is because he is God and I am not. So let me say that again. We should pray because he is God and I am not. When I was um, in primary school, we used to have these um, we used to have these games, and for those of you who are from Trinidad and, and who are of, <laughs> of my age, uh, might remember these games, uh, where you would choose persons who you wanted to be on your team, and of course, um, if it was a game of cricket, they would always choose the best. You'd always want to choose the best batsmen or the best bowlers. If it were a game of, of, of um, football, you would choose those who you knew to be um, really skilled in the game to be on your side. So prayer is, we spoke about prayer being about relationship. Now we're talking about prayer being, um, we pray because he is God and we are not. I cannot think of a better person that I would want to be in my corner than Papa God. If you could think of somebody else, please let me know. Message me in this video. Let me know. Send me a, a, a WhatsApp message. But I cannot think of anybody else who I would rather have in my corner than God. So we pray because he is God. I am not. I could be as wise as all the wise men or wiser than all the wise men on the face of this earth. I would still come to absolutely nothing compared to him. I could be as powerful as all or more powerful than all of the world leaders put together. The United States, China, Russia, whoever else, the United Kingdom. All of them put together, I am absolutely nothing compared to him. So we pray because he is God and I am not. Another very important reason why we pray is not only is he God, but <laughs> I love this one. He is love. Not only does he love, but God is love itself. What do I mean by that? Okay, so he is God. There is nothing more powerful than he is. There is no one more wise than he is. There is just no one besides him. And not only that, but he is the he is love itself no one nothing no one on the face of this earth not my parents not my wife not my good friends no one can love me like god does no one likewise no one can love you like god does so when you put all of that together, we pray, or I pray, apart from wanting to enter into relationship with God, I pray because He is God. He is all powerful. He is all knowing. He is all wise. And He is love. I cannot 
think I cannot fathom any other more important reason why I should pray, why I should seek his counsel, why I should want to enter into relationship with him. Because I want him who is all wise. I want him who is all powerful. I want him who is omnipresent. I want him who is, whose love has no beginning and no end. I want him in my corner. Or should I say, I want to be on his side. So here is the ball knocked clear out of the ballpark for six. Here is the, the punchline of this. This God, who is all powerful, this God, who knows everything, this God, who loves me beyond measure, this God says to us, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you and plans not for your demise. He says that to us in the prophet Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. He says to us, I, I who am God, I know the plans that I have for you and they are plans to prosper you. The only way that we can know what is in the heart and mind of God for us is for us to lean like the Apostle John, the disciple whom he loved, to lean into his heart. The only way that we can discover what are these plans that God has for us is for us to lean into him. Just like that apostle that the scripture tells us the apostle that Jesus loved, to lean into him. And we do that through prayer. So, so far, to recap, we shouldn't run to God and use him as an ATM machine only when um, we have challenges that we go running to him. But rather, we should seek first and foremost to establish relationship with God. Point number one. Secondly, we go to him because he is God and we are not. God is God and he always will be God. We are mere creatures that he, the creator, created. So we go to him because of that. Three, we go to God because God is love. And then we, out of that love, this God who is all-powerful, this God who is all-knowing, this God who is love, this God who is omnipresent, omniscient, this God knows the plans that he has in store for me. He has the blueprint for my life. This God has the blueprint for your life. And we will never discover that blueprint on our own. We need, like John, to lean into the bosom of God to discover what that blueprint for us, for our lives are. And we do this through prayer. Now, I am hoping that so far you're beginning to see in your mind what to be able to put together a correct concept of what prayer is and in by extension you are able to start to piece together and start to maybe ask yourself or answer questions like how should i pray when should i pray etc etc and all of these little things as we go along i'm hoping we will probably be able to to touch on a bit more all right so may god bless you Thank you for taking the time to look at this. May God bless you and keep you and draw you deeper, deeper into himself. Bye for now. This has been a production of Fully Catholic Radio. You can tune into Fully Catholic Radio by downloading our app. You can also tune in via an Alexa device or from any computer by going to www.fullycatholic.com. Then click the play button. 
Thank you for watching.